my name is Eric Byers, and welcome to Highland Springs High School. This is Earth Science, and today we're going to be talking about absolute age and radioactivity. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, last class we talked about relative age. We said relative age was what? How older or younger, How older or younger something is. A sequence, right? Absolute age, on the other hand, what would be a good example of absolute age? Uh, yeah, exactly. If you gave a date, okay? So, absolute age is telling you exactly how something old, old something is. Okay? So you could use an example, like some of y'all were born maybe in 2000. Okay? Today's date, December 6, 2018. Right? That would be an example of absolute age. How do we determine the absolute age of a rock layer, though? Some of you have probably heard that before, or heard of a method. Anyone ever heard of carbon dating? Yeah. Okay, so carbon dating is a method of determining the absolute age of something, but we don't really use it for rocks, because most of our rocks are older than 50,000 years old. Yeah, so we use radioactive dating, good. Okay, so radioactive dating, good job, Patrick. <coughs> is how we're going to determine the absolute age of a rock layer. So how do we get the rock layers 300 million years old? So when we do this, we're looking at isotopes. Who remembers what an isotope is? Uh, Mia, you got it? So you're close. It does equal. deal with protons and neutrons. Yeah, you want to fill it in? Equal. Yeah, yeah. Equal protons. You're close. So it has the same number of protons and different neutrons, right? So an atom with the same number of protons, different neutrons, is called an isotope. Okay? And by looking at the number of isotopes of, say, uranium and lead, we can actually figure out how old something is. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, show radioactivity with Skittles. Okay? So you're going to receive a little teacup that has a whole bunch of Skittles in. When you get them, go ahead and count out however many you got. Okay? Is that step one? All right, so go ahead and start out by counting off our total number of atoms. So our total number of Skittles. Okay, you got it. And you got 48. All right, everyone have them all counted out? Or just about? Groovy. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, as you probably noticed before with Skittles, they have two sides, right? What's it say on one side? An S, okay? So from now on, we're going to call the side with the S, Skittleum. Skittleum, okay? Skittleum is our radioactive or parent isotope. Okay? Skittleum is unstable. It doesn't want to be Skittleum anymore. 
It wants to be blankium. Okay, which would be the side that does not have the S. Okay, so what we're going to see is we're going to see how does it radioactively decay. So what I want you to do, you'll notice that you have a data table. All right, under zero half-lives, because we haven't even started the experiment yet. Okay, I want you to put the total number of Skittles that you got under the Skittleium atoms remaining. So for example, if I had 27 Skittleium atoms, I'd put a 27 in that box. Does anyone know where to put it? All right, then you can go ahead and put your Skittles back into the teacup. Or the Dixie cup. Mm -hmm. Did you count them all up? Okay, make sure you record it right here. Perfect. Oh my god. Forgot what I One, two, three, four. Did you lose track? <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate radioactive decay. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to take our teacup, we're going to give it a little bit of a shake, and we're going to pour them out on our paper towel again. Okay, so give them a little bit of a shake. Go ahead and pour them out on your paper towel. It doesn't have to be a huge shake, just a little one. Go ahead and pour it. All right, then what you want to do is you want to separate them into two piles. So our two isotopes. Our parent isotope, which is the scandalium, very good. And our daughter isotope, which is the blankium. So go ahead and separate them into two piles. Remember, skittleium and blankium, okay? Yep, you have to ha have them in two piles. The skittleium in one pile, the blankium in one pile. It's however many ended up face up and however many ended up face down, okay? Yeah, so skittleium, all the skittleium going to a pile, all the blankium going to a pile. Then it's a blankium. They were face down, right? So they radioactively decayed. So keep in mind, the ones that go from skittleium to blankium, okay, those are the ones that have radioactively decayed. So they're now in our daughter isotope form. Super blankium. What if it's like barely there? If it barely has one, I barely yeah, has that? ass. Yeah, was it face up, face down? It still counts as face up then. Oh, so okay. Yeah, that's still face up. So that's still skittily, okay? What's up? Do your best with the yellow ones. If you can see them clearly, great. If you can't, just count them as blank cam, okay? Separate it. What do you think you're going to do after you separate them, guys? Yeah, exactly. Count them up. So you want to count up and tell me how many you have in each file. And where do you think you're going to put that in the data table? Right next to the blank unit. Yeah, so the skittleium after one half-life are going to be the ones that were S face up, right? So your total number of S face up is going to go right here under one half-life, skittleium atoms. The blankium are going to go in the next file. Well, that's such a tall word to say. Hey, you know, Oh, 
Just using a calculator. Would you count this? Oh, uh, that's true. I guess a calculator might make your life a little easier, right? No, oh, well, let's take care of that. Yes, sir. So uh, there's a parent or the daughter? Are they the parent or the daughter? The, the skittleum or the blanket? Okay. So under the first half life, skittleum atoms remaining. You good? So S face up and then S face down, right? Can you make your two piles? So that and these all the rest of these were like face down, right? Okay, so count up these and then count up these. All right, is everyone wrapping up the first half life? Let's take about 30 more seconds to make sure that we get our data for the first half life. You'll need to hear in a second. Maybe. Hey. All right, so after you've counted them, this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Can all of our isotopes still radioactively decay? Yeah, they can? You sure? No, what are the only ones that can still radioactively decay? The skittleum, okay? So only the skittleum are going to go back into your cup. Okay, the blankium, leaving that pile right there. So go ahead, put the skittleum back in your cup. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do our second half life. So go ahead, once again, take those Skittles, okay? Shake them up a little bit and roll them out. And roll. All right, once again, you're going to separate them into two piles, a skittleum pile and a blankium. But you can add your blankium from this half-life to your other blankium pile. Does that make sense? So once again, there's only going to be two piles on your paper, a skittleum and then a bigger blankium. All right, then ladies and gentlemen, just like before, you're going to count your number of skittleum and your total number of blankium. So that includes both the first round and the second round. Okay. Oh. So make sure that you include the ones in the previous round. Nope, nope, nope. That one was right. That one's the one we got to look at. Okay. So count up your total number of blankium, the one from this round and the one from last round. That's why we added to our pile, right? So your total should be higher for the blankium and lower for the skittleum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had 20, and then 14 of them were skittle in, right? Okay. So that means that six of them work. So you need to have that six plus 20. All right. For example, ladies and gentlemen, after my second round, okay, after the first time I had 13, right? Now maybe I have six, okay? I need the total number of blank you, not just how many there were that round. Okay? So I would do however many I had that round plus the previous round. So I had seven more. That's going to give me 21. Does that make sense? Yeah. No? Jayla, you're not? Okay. So make sure you put your total number of blank cube. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, only the skittleum are going to go back into the cup. Only the skittleum. So only the S face up. So how many would I be putting back in my cup? Just the six that were face up. Okay? 
Alright, go ahead. You can continue on with your half-life. Do it until you get down to one or less skittleium. Alright, so you are going to make a graph of your skittles. But what I do want you to do, okay, is I want to collect everybody's data. So why would we collect everybody's data, by the way? Why wouldn't we just use Patrick's data? So in science, what do we have? Why, why do we? Why multiple? So you can have more accurate. To test it over and over again. What's that called? Three, trials. Repeated trials. Very good. Okay. So what I want you to do, if you go to this URL right here, okay. And to be honest, if one person at your table brings up their computer, okay, then you can pass it around real fast. But I want you to put your data in. So tinyurl.com slash absolute skittle. And then what we're going to do with the data is we're going to make a big graph, okay, and see how everyone's compared. All right, so while you're waiting, go ahead and try working on your graph. Let's see how your graphing skills look since we first covered it in the first unit. All right. You are going to end up having two Line graphs. Two line graphs. Just the skittleium. So just those 28. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, it's not that bad. So your number of half lives. How many half lives do you have? Let me turn back over. Zero through six. Okay. So you're gonna have zero through six. All right. So spread it out. Zero through six. And then atoms remaining. How many total atoms did you have? So your max would be 49. I know a lot of y'all are right in the middle of your graph, but let's go ahead and let's talk about okay, what happens when we put all of our data combined. Okay, so all y'all put your data into the Google form. Okay, that Google form then, I used it to create a nice little graph that looks something like this. How many of y'all's graph looks a little bit like that? A little bit, right? Okay. Where you have the two lines, you have the parent isotope, and in that case it's blue. Okay, you guys, you with me? All right. You have the parent isotope in that blue line, you have the daughter isotope in that red line. So, what's happening to the daughter isotope every time? What was happening to the skittleium, roughly? It was going down. By roughly what percent was it decreasing each time? Say it louder. Yeah, roughly half, right? So every time here, we were dividing it by two. So divide it by two. Divide it by two. Okay? And some of your numbers weren't exactly that. Right? Because that's a little bit of probability. But every time it was divided by two. What was happening to the daughter isotopes? They were growing. They're increasing, right? Okay? So what we look at here, half-life is the time it takes for half of the sample to decay. All right, so at half the sample, one half-life, we almost have a perfect even number of blankium and skittleium when we look at all of our class as a whole. Once again, why do we do repeated trials in science? Accurate information. Yeah, accurate information. Right, we want to make sure that we can prove it time and time again. No one's data looked perfectly like that, but when we combined it all together, we ended up with some great results. All right, so thank you for joining us here at Highland Springs today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Thank you for stopping by. Goodbye.